Is it still safe to fly on a commercial airline in the U.S.? We've heard about tires falling off. We've heard about airplanes coming within 500 feet of a neighborhood in Oklahoma. We have heard about doors blowing off of airplanes. So what is really going on and what does the data say? Hey guys, my name is Katie. I'm a professional pilot and I am here to talk about what is going on right now with the safety trends in aviation in 2024. So first of all, I just want to say overall in the U.S., pilots have to have a minimum of 1,500 flight hours to even be an airline pilot. In reality, if you're getting hired by one of these bigger airlines, um, you have about four or 5,000 hours. So very highly qualified pilots in the U.S. The U.S. is kind of the standard of training for pilots. Many pilots come from overseas, do their training in the U.S., then go back to their airline. For example, if you're in China, you only have to have 250 total hours to be a first officer on one of their airlines, as opposed to the U.S., which is 1,500 hours. So you can see there's a vast difference in the level of experience for American pilots. We also have a very, very strict medical process. It's almost to the point where pilots are asking for reform because they're so restrictive on what kind of medications and previous health conditions pilots can have. If you're over 40 years old and you're an airline pilot, you're going every six months to get an extensive medical. If you're under 40, it is once a year. And if you're over 40, you're doing a full EKG and all kinds of other things. So the pilot's health is extensively checked. Pilots also take check rides every six months if they work for an airline. So they're getting into a sim with a check airman, they're doing maneuvers, they're doing some training, and they have to pass to a certain standard in order to continue flying the public. I think what is happening right now is a little bit of media sensationalization. I understand aviation can be very sexy. <laughs> I understand it can also be very scary. And for somebody who is not a pilot or not in the aviation world, you're basically putting your life in somebody else's hands. And anytime for people where, when we're not in control, it is, it is very scary. And I totally get that. You also, you know, don't necessarily understand the whole situation. So you're just sitting in the back and hoping that the people up front know, know what's going on. And when you're hearing about all these maintenance things that are happening and issues with pilots, it makes you really nervous. And I totally, totally understand that. So let's look at the statistics and see how safe it is today to fly on an airplane versus other forms of travel. So first of all, I just want to say these stats can be a little bit confusing because some of them are measured over number of miles traveled in order to compare the statistics with trains and other kinds of wheeled travel. And other statistics are based off of flight hours to compare air travel to previous air travel. So the first one I'm going to go over is the rate of being injured or dying in a plane crash, which previously was 0.14 it is now 0.11. So it has gone down and 2022 and 23 were some of the safest years in aviation history. So we're doing a lot of studying. We're doing a lot of learning. Anytime that there is a plane crash accident or incident, there is a thorough investigation and the FAA and the NTSB have a process to really learn from those mistakes. There's also pilot programs that pilots can report their own mistakes to these programs without any repercussions in order for everyone else in the industry to learn from these things. Every airline and every aviation company I've ever worked at, minus one, which was a smaller company, we have always had a safety section where we basically air our own dirty laundry to our own pilots. This is very standard in the industry. We like to sit down and look at near misses that maybe the public never even heard about and say, what happened in this and how do we avoid it? So that is definitely a trend in aviation. There is definitely a lot of movement towards safety and always improving because we all want the number to be zero, right? Of any accident or injury ever. Um, now let's talk about traveling by train versus traveling by airplane. Which one is safer? So this actually surprised me. They're both extremely safe. So I thought it would be a little closer, but they're both such small numbers that it's almost a little ridiculous. So 0.04 per 100 million mile traveled is the rate of dying in a train accident. 0.04 for 100 million miles traveled. For an airplane, it's 0.01 per 100 million mile traveled. That is the rate of dying in a plane crash. That's insane. That's very low. I thought they would both be low, but th they're both very, you know, both very safe, which is what we love to see. Now, let's talk about the data on flying commercially versus driving. So the national, the International Air Transport Association has stated that the data from 2021 is that we had 7.7 .7 million flights and there was one accident. That is a 0.23% chance. 
This equates to if you were going to fly every day for 10,000 years, then you would have a chance of dying in a plane crash. So that's a, a very safe statistic that's very compelling. Now, on the other hand, the uh, National Highway Transportation Safety Administration states the percentage chance of dying in a car crash at 1 in 101. So obviously much safer to fly than to drive. So if you're considering this summer, you know, you've heard about these news articles and you're you're thinking maybe we'll just drive on this long family trip, you are statistically much safer flying. Um, so take that for whatever it's worth. I think right now things are being quite sensationalized. Now, obviously, we don't have the data for 2024, um, but I know that the maintenance processes have not changed in a negative way. We know that the pilot training has not changed in a negative way, and we know that the qualification standards for pilots has not decreased. So there really has been no major event that would indicate that the rules that govern safety in the U.S. are different. Now, we're obviously watching what's going on with Boeing. We have had congressional hearings with the CEO and talking about what Boeing is doing to kind of um, bring their safety quality back up to where it really should be. And we'll keep an eye on that. But overall, I think that, you know, there are some things that happen in aviation and it's inherently risky. Anything you do is inherently risky. Walking out of your house, staying in your house, it's all inherently risky, right? Um, and I think we need to stay away from this idea of sensationalizing things. I think that sometimes the, the media cycle picks up a certain trend and it can be... Um, almost to the point of inciting a panic. And in those instances, I think it's really, really wise to look at the data, understand the whole point, the whole picture, how pilots are trained, their qualifications, their hours, their medical certification process, how the maintenance is so regulated and so forth, and really see that the data says it is statistically very safe to fly on a commercial airline in the United States. So I hope this helps you. I understand that people can be very nervous flying. I know this summer, and maybe you've had some travel plans. So I hope that this helps you enjoy your trip and maybe not be nervous and just sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight.